Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening for whoever is joining this conference. Um, my name is Ricardo Ferreira, and I am about to start a presentation for the Open Source Summit. Right? Uh, I would like to thank the Open Source Summit uh, Conference for inviting me for this for this session, and I'm um, looking forward to talk with you and doing the Q and A. All right. Um, for those of you that probably apply for the session, uh, we're going to start talking about some very cool, interesting subject called event stream processing. And more importantly, we're going to talk all of this in the context of using Apache Kafka, which is by far one of the popular fuels for engines for how to implement event stream processing these days. Right. So what I'm going to do now is start sharing my screen because Mostly my presentation is going to be um, a live demo. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about what I'm going to do for the next 45 minutes. But ultimately, what we're going to do is to build a uh, event stream processing application from scratch. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And I would like to, all right. So you should be able to see my screen now. And I um, hope, oh, uh, looking forward to. So. Before we started, uh, let me explain a little bit about myself. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ricardo Ferreira, and um, I work as a developer advocate in this company that we call Confluent. All right, for Confluent is basically a startup from California, but is mostly known because it is one of the companies behind Apache Kafka as the open source community, right? As well as it is a company that builds a event streaming platform on top of Kafka. So that's that's how we have this different relationship with Kafka, right? So as a developer advocate, my job is to primarily connect developers with knowledge, right? Developers with content. So uh, if you ever have any questions about Kafka specifically, or the event stream platform that uh, Confluent uh, develops, uh, I would like to help you right, to accomplish that. And my job is also being part of a Kafka Summit uh, program committee member. So Kafka Summit is an annual conference for about Kafka, and it's all about the open source version of Kafka, right? So in there, I help to build out the final agenda with the other program committee members, right? So. These are my contacts. Uh, this is my email from Confluent, and this is my personal email as well, which also happens to be my blog. So uh, I usually publish some very <laughs> interesting contacts that are right there about Kafka or event streaming and things like that, right? And this is my Twitter handle. So for those of you that uh, use Twitter, um, please follow me on Twitter as well as these two other handles as well, which is the Kafka handle and the Confluent handle. Which usually there are some very good content that are published on Twitter. And I think it's interesting for you to start following those, those handles. So as I mentioned before, um, the whole purpose of this presentation is to give you um, an idea about what is an event streaming pl platform or an event streaming application looks like, right? So I am a developer, probably just like yourself, right? And there are some concepts out there that are not easy digestible, right? And I, I strongly believe that event stream processing is one of them, right? I, I've been working with this technology for the last three years, right? And even today, I still have a little bit of problem to fully understand the technology, right? And as developers, I think the best way for learning a technology is to look firstly as an example. Right now, so show me an example of event stream performance so I can actually realize uh, what I can do with it, right? And then if the interest is, is uh, applied, we can actually go deeper in the, the understanding the technology and learning all the bits and bytes of the technology and we can become experts on it, right? So that's the whole objective of this presentation. And the way we're going to do this, I have built this demo that I've called Streaming Pac-Man, right? So Pac-Man is a very famous game. I don't need to actually explain what the game is all about, right? But what we're going to do actually is uh, I have deployed this game in a cloud provider, right? And I'm going to expose this game for you, for everybody that is listening to the session, right? And you are going to have the opportunity to play with the game, right? So what we're going to do, it, what I am going to do actually is to allow you to play, and as you play, events from this game is going to be transmitted to a Kafka cluster that is also running on the same cloud provider, right? So why is that? Because I'm going to grab all those events, and as they happen, 
I'm going to process them in near real time and come up with something called a scoreboard, right? Just like you, you've seen here in the diagram, right? So it's scoreboard. The interesting part about it is going to be dynamic. What that means is that whoever is actually having a higher score is going to be put in the first or previous position uh, regarding the other players, right? And this is going to change uh, automatically, right? So instead of building a static set of data, such as a table, right? Although I, I agree that it looks like a table, right? But it's going to be a dynamic table, right? So that's the whole beauty of event stream processing. You can actually start acting upon events as they happen and start using and start doing something useful with this data, right? You don't need to rely on the, um, I, I have a problem saying the term owed, right? Because sometimes uh, some people might be still working with this uh, philosophy of how to handle data, right? But in this context of event stream processing, we can refer to the old days of first storing the data into a database so you can actually be able to process them, right? I know uh, that there's a lot of applications that still do this, right? Uh, and there is nothing wrong in doing this type of architecture, right? But there are specific use cases where you don't have the possibility, right? to wait until data is being stored until you start processing them. Right? There's a lot of use cases that are drawing specifically on the context of cloud serverless and event stream processing that needs uh, a different architecture principles to how do you going to handle the data. And this is what we are going to accomplish with this streaming Pac-Man demo, right? So um, let me make sure we're ready to go. We are, and everything that I'm going to show here is actually an open source implementation that I have done uh, and I made available on GitHub. So this is the link where you can grab all the source code that I'm going to use it right now in this presentation, right? And the architecture behind this, uh, what, what the source code provides, right? It's an end-to-end event streaming application that is composed by two main pieces. And this is the first thing for those of you that uh, never worked with event streaming before, right? Event streaming is highly composed of two main components, right? There is the one component that we call streaming data or data streaming, as you want to call it, right? And there's another layer called streaming analytics, okay? What is the difference between the two of them? Streaming data is all about data acquisition, ingestion and storage, all right? So in other words, you, you're not necessarily processing anything yet. You're basically acquiring data and storing data, right? And this is what the, the architecture does because we're gonna expose the application in the cloud provider, just like it, as you can see here. And when you start playing with this application, events from the application will be invoking this API gateway. What, everything happens to be running on the same cloud provider. So for the sake of, uh, where everything is running and communicating to each other is within the same cloud provider, right? So the application is going to emit events to this API gateway. The API gateway implementation backend is going to be a Lambda function, right? Uh, and this Lambda function basically receives the events and write into a Kafka topic, right? So basically that's all about, just like I said, event uh, data ingestion and storage, right? So once the data is there on the Kafka topic, we're going to use an engine that happens to be another open source project along with Kafka that we call KSQL DB, right? KSQL DB is largely known as being a stream processor, right? That uses the SQL language as a way to express your stream processing applications. But underneath, what it does is actually uh, deploy a bunch of Kafka streams applications that act upon the data and is going to process the data as they flow through Kafka, right? So that's basically the high level definition of KSQL DB is more than that, of course, but um, for the matter of this demo, what we're going to do is using KSQL DB to, to implement this second layer that I've mentioned before called streaming analytics, right? So what is the streaming analytics? Streaming analytics is the ability to act upon data that is still in motion, right? and you are producing value about that data, 
right? So what we are going to do specifically is to all the events that are coming to the inbound Kafka topic, we're going to use KSQL DB to process them in near real time, right? You know that real time actually doesn't exist or apply. Um, and we're going to produce the output of that processing, that streaming analytics processing into a second Kafka topic that we're going to call it scoreboard because the name is very suggestive, right? And this scoreboard will be made available for a lot of different uh, web channels, primarily a web application, right? Uh, that's going to be running on the cloud provider, but also through APIs, you can actually access the scoreboard uh, rather calling the API directly or using some other devices that I'm going to show in the end. And that's the, that's the, uh, the prestige part of this presentation. This is something that I, I'm keeping myself a secret, right? I, I haven't, um, I haven't put down on the abstract when I posted the session for the for the conference, but because I like to uh, do a surprise by the end of this presentation to put about how uh, how some smart and intelligent ways can you consume the data from the scoreboard, right? So I'm looking forward to be to provide some fun as well because, as I said, you're going to be able to play with the game, right? But I um, I need you to understand what we are doing with this application, right? So as I said, we're doing two set of two separate sets of uh, processing, streaming data, right? Or data streaming, as I mentioned before, and streaming analytics, right? So in other words, we're gonna do doing ingestion, store and processing of data in your real time, all right? So uh, I would like to invite everybody that is listening to the session to grab your devices, wherever you're wearing right now, like uh, uh, your mobile devices, or maybe you have a tablet, right? You can use them to scan this barcode over here, right? This is where I'm going to provide the game itself, right? Uh, you, you don't need to actually stall any application. This is basically a web application running on a cloud provider. Technically speaking, what I'm doing is creating a bucket on that cloud provider. And the application is basically a bunch of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files that I've uploaded to that bucket, right? Uh, so, could you please scan the barcode and you will be able to do this uh, and start playing the game. And for those of you that would like to use computers for this, what I'm actually going to do just to help you out is to grab the direct URL of this application, right? And I'm going to make it available here on the chat for everybody, right? So if you're looking to the chat, uh, uh, actually, let me pass again because, okay. So you can, if you're using your laptop for uh, watching this conference, right? You can simply grab this URL that I just passed on the chat and you can put it on the browser and there you have it. You're gonna be able to play with the game. So let me show you how that works. So you can actually see how that happens. So I'm gonna literally um, use my browser and I'm gonna pass it here, the URL that I've just provided in the chat. So as you can see, once you've accessed the URL, you're going to be presented to this initial screen of the Pac-Man game, right? And you're gonna enter your name. Uh, it doesn't have to be your real name. You can be a nickname or something that uniquely identify yourself, right? Uh, just be mindful about not using some jokes that might be offensive for, because we're gonna show this all, everything that you're gonna write it here is going to be shown on the scoreboard, right? So please be mindful about and respectful to, to other people, all right? So I'm gonna provide my name specifically here, right? And click play. So once you do this, you're gonna see this quick animation that basically shows the Pac-Man logo, right? And all the ghosts from the game are going to have uh, specific nicknames for the Apache Kafka. So if you have a Apache Kafka background, you're going to recognize some of them, like the broker, partitions, controller, and the offset, right? And if you click again on this, you will be actually starting your own game, right? So I'm not going to play here. Uh, I'm going to click. I'm going to press the, the the letter P for pause, right? And because of course I'm, I'm here to present, not to play, right? Uh, I want you to play. So I'm gonna go back here to the slides. So for those of you that are using mobile devices or want to use mobile devices, just scan this barcode over here. 
and you're going to end up with the same URL that I've just provided in the chat, right? So uh, I'm going to give you one minute here for those of you get ready to play the game and you can start playing, right? Uh, and then after that, I will go back to the screen and I will start building the scoreboard from scratch, right? And of course, explaining step by step. So feel free to scan a barcode, use the URL and start playing. Yeah, so uh, Edward um, asked for about what is the link. So it is on the chat, but I'm going to provide here as an answer as well for the Q&A so everybody can follow up on that. So thank you, Edward, for your question. Okay, I do hope that everybody at least grabbed the URL or scanned the barcode. So what I'm gonna do now, very quickly, is to observe if events are hitting that coffee topic that I've shown before, right? So that will be the proof that whoever is playing the game right now, the events are being ingested and stored into Kafka, right? So the way I'm gonna show this, um, I'm gonna grab this URL over here, which happens to be the endpoint where you can connect, technically create a client session to the KSQL DB cluster that is running on the cloud provider. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to, uh, as a client, I'm going to connect with that cluster and once connected, which uh, it seems that I am, I will be able to query those streams. So um, let me just see if there's any questions. That q is, isn't showing up for all the right, okay. Um, yeah, so Laura is saying that the Q&A answer is not showing up for all. Um, yeah, Laura, so I think you could actually just go to the chat uh, on the platform and the URL that I've provided is there. Um, so, because the Q&A uh, will probably only be available in the end of the presentation, right? So, you you would be better off to just grab the URL from the from the chat, right? So, um, let me check if the events are coming. So, I'm going to print the topic user game from beginning, and uh, here we go. It seems that we're having people having lots of fun playing the game right now. So this is what we call event stream. Uh, if you have, if you never kind of a fully understood the concept of event streams before, this is a perfect way to understand because uh, an event stream is basically an unbounded set of data, right? It's a set of data that never ends, if you, if you will. Uh, so the way, um, there are different uh, architecture styles that you can use to develop our software these days, right? One of them, right, is the opposite of event streaming, which we, what we call uh, data streaming or static streaming, where the data is first acquired and permanently stored into a database, whether if it's a relational databases or NoSQL databases. And then you're going to come up with uh, programs that you're gonna write in different programming languages that is going to first, step number one, read the data from the store. And step number two, load the data up and then start processing it, right? Event streaming applications are different, right? Event streaming applications need to deal with something like this that never ends, right? So how do you process data that is continuously being updated and it keeps coming, right? Every second, every millisecond, every microsecond, and you're still gonna be able to process all of them. And instead of using batch-oriented styles, right? 
you're going to use some new real time style of processing data. So this, this is the exciting part of event streaming applications, right? And you're going to see that's really easy. Like if you at least know SQL or SQL, uh, you're going to be able to express event stream processing applications really easy using KSQL DB, right? So I'm going to stop this. I know that everybody is playing. Um, I'm going to stop basically what I'm doing here. We're just printing here. Probably the game will still be available. And if you, if you fancy to keep playing the game, just play the game. Uh, I don't mind. Right. What I'm going to start doing now is building the scoreboard, right? As I promised. Right. So, um, this is stream of events that I've just showed it here. It belongs to a topic called user topic. Sorry, user game. Okay, this is a topic called user game. That's what I did here when I when I uh, print user game. I'm basically this is a command in case SQL DB to dump whatever is contained and still coming into that topic. Right. This is called print. Right. But this is not cool because when you print stuff or you dump stuff, you basically are getting access to the raw data. Right. What we want to do is to transform the data into a format that we can start dealing with it, right? We can start querying it. We can start filtering it. We can start transforming that data to whatever you want, right? And the first step to build an event streaming application is to come up with the stream representation of your event streams, right? And coming up with the actual representation that you can handle with the platform. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to reset the offset. For those of you that know Kafka, offset is the jargon for you're going to go back to the beginning of the top. So whatever you can going to do now is going to reuse all the data that has been processing since the beginning of the times, right? And what I'm going to do is to create the two streams. One of them is called user gain, and the second one is going to be user losses, okay? I'm going to create them and I'm going, to, I'm going to explain which one of them does, right? User game holds your game data, right? Such as your score, your current level, or the number of lives that you have, right? And the user losses is every time you game over into the game, this is going to represent a loss, right? Which is not good, I know. But this is going to represent, this is going to be another event that's going to be emitted to the, uh, the topic user losses. And this topic is uniquely used for counting the number of times you lose, right? Why this information is important? Because later on, you're going to see that the scoreboard will be based on this information, right? For example, imagine two players have the same score. How do we pronounce which one is the winner? So, okay, if they have the same score, we can actually use how many of them actually, um, didn't die so much, right? So that's a way for 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 to figure that out, okay? So with that said, I've just created streams and look at what I'm what I'm what I am able to do with the streams. I can actually select them as if they were a database table, right? If you will. But here's the difference between a database table and a stream. In KSQL DB, as you can see here, I'm selecting uh, a stream of events that never ends, right? So, but now instead of accessing the raw format of the application, I'm actually uh, accessing some data that has some data types, has the notion of columns, and each column has associated with value with it, right? So, if you go back to the presentation, you're going to see that this is what I've done here, right? So, this is the raw definition of the user game, right? So I have the field called user and another field called game. And this field game actually has a inner JSON payload on it. So the game has an inner JSON payload that in turn has score, lines, and level. So what I've done here is to create a stream called user game. And then I'm mapping this field here to this user field, which happens to be a varchar, right? And the game field, I am actually designing here as a struct or a data structure, if you will, all right? So a struct is basically something that can have inner fields, whether you can have other structs on it, or just like here, I have a flat definition of the game itself. And then once you do this, you can actually 
query specific set of data directly like this. For example, if I, if I only want to see the user and the score, I'm going to say game and then score from user game can be changes, right? So doing this, I'm going to be only selecting the user column and the score column. Um, is everybody playing right now? Probably not because it's not showing anything, but anyway, it's, it's, it's fine, right? Um, the point is you can actually see, you can actually access specific fields from the game field, right? Using this notation here, which is a pointer, if you will, for those of you that came from C++, it reminds the pointer when you navigate through the, the hierarchy of the, the object, right? So that's how you come up with this uh, notion of selecting specific pieces of data, right? Um, all right, let's move on. So we did the same thing with the uh, user losses. As you can see here, where's my browser? Or my code. Yeah, so we did the same thing with the user losses topic, right? So we, we brought the representation of the user losses as a stream. So what I'm going to do now is to, out of those streams, I'm going to create two tables, right? The first one is going to be called stats per user, and the second one is going to be called losses per user, right? So stats per user, what's it going to do? I'm doing some aggregation here. So in a per user basis, I'm going to calculate the max score and the max level of that particular user, and I'm going to group by that user, right? Losses per user is going to be the same. So I'm going to actually, uh, in a per user basis, count the number of times that they've, they've lost in the game. So let me select this right here. And I'm going to connect again to KSQLDB. And I'm going to pass this statement over here. So I can come up with the table stats per user and the table losses per user. Okay, they have been created. Okay, good, 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 good. So let's see if they have been created indeed. So if I show the streams, I should be able to see the user game and the user losses streams. And if I show the tables, I should be able to see the users per user and stats per user table. So what I'm going to do now is to play with a little bit. I'm going to select everything from stats per user, stats per user. We can see the type of data that actually is there, right? Um, I'm not sure if everybody's playing with the game right now. We should be able to see some data coming in. But if not, that's okay. Um, just stop this query over here. One of the interesting things about queries in event stream and applications is that, as you can see here, once they start, they never end. You have to explicitly kind of a control C or stop the query so they can start, so they can stop pulling the data from the sources, which in this case is the stats per user table, right? Sticking a Y here for we stop this query. Um, let's wait a couple minutes so we can stop. Okay. Okay. Um, let me grab the URL of the KSQL DB again. Instead of querying from here, this window, what I'm going to do is query from here. I think we're going to be better off using a, it's our own terminal to handle that. Specifically because I can increase the font size, which is great, right? All right, so let me print. Let me show which topics we have right now. Um, sorry, show topics. So let me print stats per user from the beginning.
it seems that it's taking a while to fetch the data from the cloud provider. I don't know if that is do some high traffic for data coming in, or if maybe I have I'm having internet connection, which I doubt it. But in any case, it's always good to see if we're not we're still connected, right? Yes, we are. So it's not about internet connection. Maybe it's traffic. So let me do this. I'm going to cancel this. For some reason, my KSQL DB cluster is not responding. So uh, I think that's one of the cool things about doing live demos, right? We can actually see problems coming up and how the speaker is going to solve them. Because ultimately, that is what you would have to do, right? And that's the beauty of it. So I'm going to actually uh, come up with these. Um, Okay, that's the terrible time to actually need to update the password, but let's try it. Okay. The, my gateway is timing out for some reason, so this is not good. All right, let me see what's happening with the uh, with my cloud provider. Okay, so let me log into AWS, which happens to be my cloud provider right now, and I need to provide my code. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, let's do it. That's the coolest part. <laughs> All right, so let's see what's happening with my um, KSQL DB cluster. It should be up. Yeah, that's what I've thought. So something is actually my KSQL DB service. How many tasks we have? I have two running, which is good. Okay. So, okay. Let's connect again to the service. Since I don't want to have, to, I don't want to lose too many time doing this, let me create the final scoreboard table so we can actually um, start doing what we came here to do, which is build up the scoreboard. So. Uh, the scoreboard table is basically it's going to perform a join between uh, losses per user and stats per user to come up with a third output table. And that's the table we're going to use for accumulate all the results. So um, let me create this. Hopefully it will create. If it creates, it means that the KSQL DB cluster is effectively running, um, which is good. It is. <laughs> So I'm going to create this final table over here as well, which calculates the highest score possible, which is among everybody that's playing, is going to basically create, calculate the max score for it. So now that is working, let me check this. All right, so let me do this with this Windows over here. Sorry about this Windows confusion, but um, I need to see both the game as well as the scoreboard that I've created alive. So what I'm going to do here is essentially access the scoreboard. I have an HTML page where, oh, it is working. Uh, my queries from my computer are not hitting the cluster, but I can clearly see here that for, for everybody that is actually playing the game right now, the scoreboard is somehow being calculated. So we have currently 21 people and oh, I'm in position 19 right now with my terrible score in the play game. So those are the people that I actually right now playing the game, right? And what you are seeing here is the result of that last table that we've created, the scoreboard table. Remember this one that does basically this, what the scoreboard table does. It comes up with the data from stats per user and joins with the losses per user, right? So let me try to select one more time. Uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm not gonna 
uh, insist on that, but because I, I can see that it it is working. What I possibly cannot be doing right now is to issue queries to the cloud provider from my computer. Don't ask me why, I really don't know. But uh, let me try to select the scoreboard from here. Scoreboard. Need to image change for that. Sorry, image change. Okay. I don't know. It is working out, so I can only assume that the cloud provider had a hiccup on the load balancer because uh, the way I expose KSQL DB to the outside world is through a load balancer, right? So maybe the load balancer got overloaded. I don't know. Sorry about that. But what matters is that this scoreboard table, right, is being automatically computed, or should I say recomputed continuously based on the stream processors that are behind each stream and table that I've created so far, right? So in order for you to fully understand how that works, and that's the part that I, I really want to touch base, right? The, if you ask me, the whole purpose of the presentation is to come up in what I'm about to say right now. Right, which is uh, if I show my tables over here, right, you're gonna see that I have the, uh, like I said, the scoreboard table, loss per user, stats per user, and the highest score, right? So if you describe this table, extended uh, scoreboard, for example, which is our main table over here, um, I can't describe, show queries then. Okay, so probably I'm not being able to show the queries. Okay, here we go. So let me just minimize a little bit because it's to the font size. So you see that I have this query over here called CTA scoreboard 41, the name, it doesn't matter, right? But basically this is the query that is as a background service, continuously running, right? And it's fetching data from the sources, which is stats per user and losses per user, and flushing the output of that processing into a scoreboard topic, right? So one of the things that we can do is to is to say, in case could be explaining this query, right? And then you are going to be able to see that what this query does is to basically uh, create this execution plan over here where all the data from these um, uh, set per user and losses per user are being mangled, right, into a unified table that happens to be scoreboard, right? And basically, this is the processing topology that behind the scenes, everything is a processor in the world of event stream processing, right? And behind the scenes, this is the topology that has been created out of those statements over here that this is, this is the beauty of KSQL DB and other stream processing engines as well. You can actually express your stream processing um, behavior using this high level programming language. It happens to look like SQL, although it's not SQL, okay? But anyway, the complexities about how to implement this topology has been abstracted away from you. And that's the beauty of KSQL DB, right? Okay, so let me go back to the time here so we we have some time sir that's this is good so um let me check here real quick if there are any questions i can see either blah 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 okay the game the game, the game works great it's just the scoreboard which doesn't show up anyway i share the game okay good 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 this is working so far we're gonna have some time for q a in the end so don't worry uh what I would like to do now is to basically uh, show you some interesting ways to make that data available outside, right? So, um, just a second. Okay. All right. So, where's the scoreboard? Where's the scoreboard? Oh, yeah, here you go. So, the scoreboard is over here. So, as you can see here, the scoreboard actually looks alive, right? Um, and as I said, this is a simple HTML code that I've just uploaded on the uh, on the cloud provider. But what this page is actually doing is pulling a web API, right? And I'm gonna actually show you 
this web API so you can see it, what is what I did. So this is AWS, which is the cloud provider that I'm using it. And I've deployed on AWS an, an API using the, their API gateway service, right? I call it the scoreboard API. And if we look to the stage of this API, we're going to be able to retrieve the endpoint of this API. So this endpoint over here is the same endpoint that this web application here is to every five seconds pulling, right? To retrieve the data from the scoreboard. So what I'm gonna do now, real quick, um, is to call this API. So you can actually see that the data that is being shown on the application matches the output of the API results, right? And this is and this is this API in turn is reading from the scoreboard topic, right? So I'm gonna create a new request. This is gonna be a post, right? Slash scoreboard, scoreboard. And if I hit send, here we go. So I'm going to put the two windows here in the same. All right, so as you can see here, so the first user winning the game is Fox Neagle, right? And the second is Raji Joing. I don't know what that means. And then the third one is going to be Daniel Lozaro, right? And fourth, so I keep her, and you got the point, right? So as you can see here, it is the same data. And that, that is a reason for this, because this API is actually reading the same source of truth, which happens to be Kafka, right? So. When you design event streaming applications, Kafka is used for both data ingestion, right? And the data output, right? So the output in here is the scoreboard topic, okay? And who populates the scoreboard topic with the data is the stream processor that has been based on KSQL DP, right? So it's very simple. If you came from the database and batch word, it is the same, the same job you would do in a database, right? You would come up with a program that reads from the source table. You would do something with that data and the output of that something, it will be flushed into a output table, right? And that output table, the downstream applications would start reading from it, right? This is the same principle, right? This haven't changed actually, right? The only difference here is that you don't process all of this in a batch mode. You process them in as they happen in your real time, right? So. Before I actually start the Q&A session, because I know that we're almost getting there, right? Let me show one last thing. And uh, I do hope that you are still able to see my uh, screen over here, my face and my hands moving here. Actually, can someone give me the feedback if I you are able to see me or not? Okay, I will then hope that you can see me, right? Because what I'm about to show you needs for you to see my live feed, my face and everything, right? Because, um, okay, let me pull this up. You're coming up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, so not sure if you are seen here, but I, what I'm showing here is this device, this intelligent device that I'm not called by name because otherwise I'm gonna activate it by voice, right? But you probably know what device is this, right? And so what I'm gonna do is to ask this device for details that are based on the scoreboard that's been computed by KSQL DB, right? So I'm gonna actually put this aside for a second. So we can actually see the scoreboard and hopefully you are still like, being able to see the device. So look what I'm about to do right now, right? So Alexa, tell me who is the best player. The best player is Fox and Eagle. All right, let me turn up the volume a little bit because I'm not sure if it was too loud. Uh, let me ask again, Alexa, tell me who is the best player. The best player is Fox and Eagle. It seems to be the same data, right? So let's try something different. Alexa, tell me who are the top five players. The top five are Fox and Eagle, Rojoyan, Toy Keeper, Daniel Lossero, and Luis Vieira. So the point being proven here is that I have made available the same set of data through an API and also an, a device that can consume the same data, right? So 
That is to show you that once you start applying the event stream process and application, you can make the data available elsewhere, right? To the wider application interested on that data, right? So that th this could be easily some application that you would implement for coming up with some smart ways to deliver data, right? This is just, a, of course, a very uh, silly example, but the point that I'm trying to prove here is that when you start leveraging event streaming applications as a concept, right? Amazing things can start happening. So what I've done here, let me just go back to the slide real quick so we can start with Q&A. What I've done here is this, I made data available, right? So this is the scoreboard cable. And then what the API is doing is basically searching the data into a cache that I've used at Radis in this case, because I truly like open source stuff, right? And then I have this engine that also happens to be part of KSQL DB, we call Kafka Connect, right? So it uses, it uses a connector based approach to continuously pushing the data that is existing on the Kafka, right? To something, right? It can be, it depends on the, that something depends on the, what the connector does. I use a connector for Redis, but it could be a connector for Elasticsearch. It could be a connector for Cassandra. It could be a connector for DynamoDB, right? Whatever you want to make it the data available, there is a connector for it, right? And what I've done later on is to use the same principle, but the, the the device, right, from Amazon is actually using this, accessing the same Redis cache that has the data from the scoreboard topic, right? So with that said, let me pause for a second and let me jump into the, okay, let me jump into the Q&A. Uh, we actually, uh, for for the sake of this demonstration, it, we're done. Uh, so whoever has a question right now, and I do hope that you have questions, please, you can just ask them. Um, so there's one here um, from Paul. I was able to get 5,000, but my name is not there. As this was easy, there might be more similar in the scoreboard. Are you replaying the old data? Or, uh, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah, we can see you. We can see you. This is basically the feedback if you see me alive. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. All right. Um, is there anyone have any questions that I could answer? Okay. Okay, so there's one here from Michael Erickson. So is Kafka the best streaming framework to use for collection data from sensors? Um, I, uh, Michael, I would say yes and no. Okay, and why is that? Kafka for the sake of scalability purposes and being able to handle large volumes of data, it is probably the, by far the best technology for it, right? However, the way you are going to actually collect the data from sensors and bring it to Kafka, that's the part where as a developer, right? This is a developer feedback. You, you might be better off using some technology, some apps such as MQTT, right? Um, so you could, you, usually what I've seen in the field, right, in my experience, is that you have a first layer of MQTT brokers that are, your sensors actually are put into the MQTT broker. And then this MQTT broker kind of a relay all the information to a Kafka cluster that where you can do stream processing, right? Uh, so you might be asking, all right, what's the problem of uh, publishing directly to Kafka? So the answer is, the, the Kafka client API, although it's very simple to use, it, it requires you to have a durable TCP stateful connection, right? And usually sensor doesn't have this ability to be always on, right? So uh, it, it's possible, technically speaking, right? But I would recommend to use this first MQTT layer, right? So for addressing that. All right, so, okay, so, Joshua asks it, can this be used to update a state on each client's game? Joshua, let me think. Um, yes, it, it would be more like implementation 
design than actually something that is possible or not? So the answer is yes, right? How I would do this, it would be, I could use another table that holds specific states and my, my client could actually keep pulling locally that particular state, its own state from the game, right? So whatever the string processing is trying to do specifically for one session, it would update that session and then my client would go there to grab all the results that has been processed for it, right? Underneath and behind the scenes. So yeah, it's possible, right? Um, the point here, I think that what is most important is uh, data is, is, in, is constantly moving around Kafka topics, right? So you can actually tr come up with another set of stream processors that will, uh, okay, scoreboard is doing what is doing best, which is holding the data for an aggregated matrix, right? But I could use the data for specific users to do something else. The whole point is you would do this, flush into a new Kafka topic, and your specific session would go there and query, right? And by the way, and I'm, I'm glad, Joshua, that you asked this question. It is possible on KSQL DB to do this, right? So you can write code that can query data from specific tables, and you can do this directly from your application. And as a matter of fact, this is what I'm doing here. Uh, for example, you see here that the highest score is Fox and Ego and has, dude, this guy is good, uh, 254,000, right, right now, and it's, and it's coming up. So in my application, let me show real quick this here. Um, there is the JavaScript code that I use to calculate the highest score here. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm basically coming up with a query, right? This is JavaScript, right? So this is no big deal. I'm coming up with a query to this table called highest score that I've created for my last, and I'm performing a HTTP post over here to that query, as you can see here, okay? And I can grab the results from it. So wherever you process them, your application can query directly using HTTP post. And literally four days ago, I the KSQL DB um, project, they coming up with a Java client. So you now are able to, and if you're a Java developer, of course, you can write code to query directly KSQL DB and do amazing stuff, right? Hopefully I answered your question, Joshua. Uh, okay, thanks, Michael, thank you too. And then Mohit asked it, is the source code developed for the sample streaming app developed? Yes, yes, um, let me put in chat here. Uh, it is on the presentation, which the conference will be make available later on. But if you if you want to right now, I can grab the you. No worries. It will be my pleasure. I'm going to pass here on the chat, right? Actually, I'm going to answer your question. So, okay, just pass it here and save. And I'll go back. All right, so the source code is there. Thank you. And then there's another question. How can app code query from KSQL DB tables? Um, Mohit, I'm not, not sure if you saw <laughs> what I just showed it, but uh, I just show it how. So I'm gonna go back here in the code. So there's this session of the code where I need, I, I need to come up with this, I need to come up with this behavior over here. Let me show you. So I'm gonna log in with my user. I'm not gonna play. I just wanna emphasize something, right? So can you see here that I, although I have my own score over here, which is 190, very low, right? The highest score from all the users is being shown here, right? Who calculates this continuously is that high score table that I've created earlier um, using the KSQL DB code, right? And then what, I'm, what this browser is doing is to continuously pulling, right? Performing this query over here against that highest score. Right, so that's basically you being able to issue KSQL DB queries directly to KSQL DB to retrieve pieces of data, right? So yeah, that's just, this is possible, right? Hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, go ahead. Okay, is there any other questions that I could happily answer, right? Do you like the application? I hope everybody enjoy it. I think the whole purpose of this uh, streaming Pac-Man demo is because not only it's fun to play, right?
but also gives you the foundation to understand the, the moving pieces, right? All right, what, what is this data streaming? What is streaming analytics? All right, how can SQLDB kind of glues together all the pieces of data? That, that's the interesting part, right? So let me double check again if the, um, okay, apparently not. So I think we'll probably end this presentation in a matter of seconds. Thank you for everybody that participated. Thank you again, Open Source Summit Conference, for inviting me to the session. And I'm looking forward to seeing you out there. Uh, and be safe, please. <laughs>